Ancient military token. Rick and Gary are exploring an area of the island where they've previously found coins. They are hopeful that they will find more coins, and perhaps ones that are even older than the Roman coins they've found previously. They set up some flags to mark spots where their metal detectors had indicated the presence of metal objects. They hoped that some of the objects they found would be the coins they were searching for. Gary has identified a promising target, and Rick was excited to see what it was. It turned out that the target was just a metal strap, not a coin. But Rick and Gary are still optimistic that they'll find something valuable soon. They continue to explore the area and use their metal detectors to look for objects. They remain focused and determined to find the treasure they're searching for. Rick and Gary are examining a thick metal object they've discovered, and they believe it might be an ancient coin. If it is a coin, it could provide further evidence that the area of the island is connected to the treasure mystery. However, they won't know for sure until they excavate the object and examine it more closely. The anticipation is building as they get closer to the truth about what this object is. Rick and Gary kept hoping that the artifacts found on Lot 5 would provide answers about the history of the treasure hunt. They work to find a connection between the artifacts and the original search for treasure. They are optimistic that this will shed light on what happened on the island centuries ago. They continued to analyze the artifacts, hoping to learn more from them. Rick and Marty were excited to meet with Laird and Emma to discuss the artifact found on Lot 5. Laird and Emma are both impressed by the artifact and have some information to share about it. They will explain what they've learned about the artifact and its possible significance. This could provide more clues about the history of the island and the treasure hunt. Laird believed that the artifact was a lead bag seal, a type of seal used in the 13th century. He explained that they were used to seal packages of goods, especially military goods. Laird noted that the team has found similar artifacts in the past, including one on Lot 32 and one at Smith's Cove. These artifacts are potentially significant because they may have been used to protect items of value, such as treasures. Laird said that the artifacts with a cut section led him to identify them as bag seals. Bag seals were made by bringing together two lead circles and stamping them together. Meanwhile, Emma analyzed the artifact with a scanning XRF machine. The machine detected lead and small amounts of iron and copper, confirming Laird's theory. The machine also provided a report that Emma will discuss with the team. Part 4 Despite not having found the Spanish silver or the solution to the island's riddle, the Lagina brothers have continued their exploration with unrelenting determination. In their recent excavations of the Money Pit and other suspicious locations on the island, they have made some astonishing discoveries that provide further evidence of unusual human activity on the island. 17th century nail and lot 26 well. Jack Begley and archaeologists Laird Niven and Helen Shelton were exploring lot 26 to investigate a 900-year-old stone well. They planned to pump out the water from the well and search through the debris for artifacts that could provide valuable information about the treasure and the island. The well was intriguing because recent water tests revealed high traces of silver. They speculated that such wells might have served as a bank on the remote Oak Island. The team remained curious about what they might discover at the bottom of this ancient well. As they pumped out the water and Jack removed debris, they noticed unusual features in the well's structure. The rocks seemed out of place and the rounded shape raised questions about their construction. The team acknowledged the uniqueness of this well, dating back to the 11th century, and hoped to unravel its mysteries. Later, archaeometallurgists Emma Culligan and Helen examined the debris and found a metal piece that looked like a nail, but had peculiar features. The rounded tip and intentional bend suggested it might have been a clinch from a hand-wrought nail, possibly made of older iron from the 1700s. They decided to inform Rick Lagina about the discovery, excited by the find. Considering its age and characteristics, the team was intrigued by the possibility that this artifact could be related to a large sailing vessel. The artifact would undergo further analysis using a CT scanner to reveal more details. Emma and Helen visited St. Mary's University the next day 
to have chemist Dr. Krista Brusso analyze the mysterious iron artifact. The scanning electron microscope was used to study the chemical composition and age of the artifact. The absence of manganese suggested it was pre-1840, aligning with the timeline suggested by Ken McKinnon's research. The team was thrilled with the results, considering the artifact's potential connection to activities on Lot 26 before any known inhabitants settled on Oak Island. The artifact may be a key piece in unraveling the secrets of this unique lot. The team expressed gratitude to the scientists and looked forward to sharing the information with the rest of the team on Oak Island. Knights Templar's carvings on rocks, Rick Lagina, Charles Barkhouse, and researcher Corin Mole go on a journey about 50 miles southwest to Liverpool, Nova Scotia. Their destination has interesting possibilities connected to stone carvings, which catches Rick's interest. While on the trip, Rick asks about the reason for their visit, and Charles explains that Isaac Rouse contacted them, believing the carvings might be relevant to their work on Oak Island. Lena is excited about the connection and mentions Fontarada, which has inspired the team for the past three years. Corin Mole, known for sharing research and guiding the team, reveals potential links between the Oak Island mystery and the Knights Templar, a Christian military order thought by some to have hidden sacred treasures in the money pit between the 11th and 16th centuries. Upon reaching their destination, Isaac Rouse and Nick Freck, local landowners, warmly welcome Rick, Charles, and Corin. Rick appreciates the hospitality, acknowledging that while Oak Island has a significant mystery, there's also a local mystery Isaac and Nick are eager to share. Isaac leads the team to the first carving, an ancient symbol believed to be a British broadhead from the 14th century. Corin suggests it might be linked to a medieval cathedral builder, adding more historical significance. The exploration continues, revealing another carving with distinct symbols. Koran identifies it as a globus cruiser, a symbol representing Christianity's dominion over the world dating back to the 5th century AD. The team considers the possibility that these carvings may connect Oak Island to a medieval church in Fonte Arata, Portugal, built by the Knights Templar. Expressing gratitude for the insights gained, Rick emphasizes the importance of returning and doing more research. The team hopes these clues will bring them closer to uncovering the mysteries surrounding Oak Island. Discovery of blue clay and iron staples at the quadrilateral. Rick Lagina, fellow landowner Tom Nolan, and the team get ready to explore Lot 13, located northeast of the swamp. They aim to find important clues that might help solve the ongoing mysteries of the island. During the excavation, the team made an interesting discovery, a layer of blue clay similar to the clay found around the money pit in 18 and 4. This blue clay, known for its ability to seal water, raises questions about a possible link between the quadrilateral formation and the construction of the money pit. Rick Lagina and the team think about the importance of the blue clay and its presence in both the quadrilateral and the eye of the swamp. They wonder if this could be evidence of a shared origin, suggesting that the same builders were involved in these two places. Geoscientist Dr. Ian Spooner examines the mysterious quadrilateral to learn more about their findings. His analysis shows a layer of clay beneath the stones, indicating that it wasn't naturally deposited in its current location. The presence of different clay types and burnt wood suggests that it was intentionally built not a natural occurrence. As the team digs deeper, they uncover a hand-forged iron staple, possibly dating back to the 6th century BC. Blacksmithing expert Carmen Legg is consulted to evaluate the artifact, and his insights suggest that the staple could have been part of a complex rope and pulley system, possibly used in the creation of the quadrilateral. Emma Culligan conducts a metallurgical analysis of the staple, revealing its elemental composition and age. The results support the idea that the artifact is ancient, possibly from the medieval times. Lead artifact in Lot 5. Jack Begley and metal detection expert Gary Drayton explore Lot 5 on the western side of Oak Island. 
Rick, Marty, and the team have made remarkable discoveries since acquiring Lot 5, including a stone structure, tools from over four centuries ago, and half of a Roman coin from 300 BC. Despite occasional signal disruptions, the team believes getting Lot 5 was smart because it has yielded many historical artifacts. One of the discoveries is a square nail from the late 1700s, which could give clues about the people who built the money pit. However, connecting these findings to the overall mystery of Oak Island still needs to be clarified. Gary Drayton's expertise continues to reveal ancient artifacts, making Lot 5 a treasure trove of historical significance. A particularly interesting find is a lead artifact, and the team wonders if it might be a trade token, possibly connected to a Roman coin found earlier on Lot 5. The mystery deepens as they think about who might have brought these items to Oak Island and for what purpose. Excitement grows as they decide to take the lead artifact to the lab for further examination by archaeologists. They hope careful analysis will provide more information about its origin and purpose. The team unanimously agrees that this could be a crucial puzzle piece. The team shares their discoveries at the Interpretive Center with Rick Lagina, Craig Tester, and archaeologist Larnen. The artifact, a lead disc with a decorative skull motif, captures their attention. With two holes punched through and a brittle texture, it feels ancient. Larnen suggests thoroughly cleaning the artifact before conducting an X-ray fluorescence scan to determine its composition. The anticipation grows as they consider the significance of the scalloped edges and peculiar holes. Could this lead disc be more than just a button? Gary Drayton imagines the possibility of a gold coin, while others think it could be an old token. The artifact undergoes a 24-hour XRF scan, revealing a composition of 99.96% lead, with traces of copper and iron in the lighter layer. The darker layer contains iron, copper, and silicone, presenting a unique, uncommon composition. Additionally, the artifact's geological origin is traced back to a region near Italy, adding an unexpected layer to the mystery. Determining the artifact's age proves challenging due to its pure composition, but the potential connection to Roman mines in Sardinia raises intriguing possibilities. Could this lead artifact be linked to the Roman coin on Lot 5? The team considers its association with the Knights Templar and the broader Oak Island mystery. FDR's boot. 80 feet into the money pit area, something fascinating was discovered. After struggling with the obstacle that obstructed the team from accessing the treasures, the team finally removed this mysterious rock from the TF-1 shaft. This mysterious rock turned out to be a drilled-through boulder from the D2 borehole, where gold evidence was previously discovered at 90 feet. That was not all that was found on the site. The team found a rubber boot dating back to 1908 to 1909, bearing the name Kaufman. It is speculated that the boot might have belonged to a member of the Old Gold Salvage and Wrecking Company, led by Franklin D. Roosevelt in 1909. The connection to Roosevelt's historic excavation near the Money Pit suggested a potential breakthrough, hinting at a timeline shift of 112 years. The team continued exploring the site, which led to recovering a gold piece in the D2 borehole, differentiating their progress from Roosevelt's efforts. They also discovered ancient timbers, which made them anticipate what was buried deep in the ground, but the team had to pause the excavation at night spikes and rock drill. Still in the Money Pit area, the Oak Island team closely monitored the excavation of the B4C shaft, which was just five feet north of borehole C1. The team hoped to reach the 90-foot depth in the C1 cluster, where earlier evidence of potentially 15th century wooden tunnels and traces of silver and gold were found. They speculated that they may have located the original money pit or a tunnel leading to a treasure chamber, even though a bedrock stopped them 130 feet in the B4C shaft, they were still determined. Several efforts led to the unveiling of a hand-wrought spike and a rock drill. The rock drill is thought to date back to medieval times. It might have been used in constructing the original money pit chamber. Later, blacksmithing expert Carmen Lega analyzed the iron spike in the research center, 
and hinted that it was potentially linked to the original money pit construction. The rock drill's age raises the possibility that it was used in carving out a chamber. Mysterious parchment. Craig Tester informs the team about a piece of parchment on the wash table. To know what this was, they journeyed to the interpretive center, where Rick Lagina, Craig Tester, and Laird Niven met with imaging experts John Gienke and David Sampson. They hoped that they could analyze the parchment using the Skyscan 1273 device. The scanning process began, and Gienke explained the reconstruction of the original sample from various slices. The team observed straight lines on the top and bottom, which indicated the parchment's placement. Science identifies bright spots on the center line that could indicate iron-based ink used for writing. This type of ink was developed in Europe during the 5th century AD. It was made by mixing iron salts and tannic acids. Pondering how significant the parchment could be, the team considered historical theories that the money pit contained treasure and valuable documents too. Sampson disclosed that the iron residue should remain visible even if the ink is no longer readable. This leaves the team wondering why such an amount of effort was used to document something on parchment and what kind of valuable information would have been on this parchment. The next day, the team reconvened with Bruker, John, and David, imaging experts in the war room. The experts presented higher resolution scans of the parchment, emphasizing the striations' directionality. They discussed the density and composition which showed that the parchment was either a paper or a cellulose-type product, but not animal skin. They also confirmed the presence of iron by examining the colored blobs on the parchment showing that the paper was wax-coated, or that the supposed parchment was just wax. Hidden inscription linked to Knights Templar. Rick Lagina, accompanied by his nephews Peter and Alex, along with Oak Island historian Doug Crowell, set out on a journey to Pavoazulangoso, Portugal, to explore potential connections between the Knights Templar, specifically the 14th century sect that was famously referred to as the Knights of Christ and the recent discoveries on Oak Island that are believed to have Portuguese origins. These discoveries include a stone road in the swamp, a ship's cannon fragment, and two stone cannonballs. They begin their investigation in the Church of Fontarcada, where local historian Joao noted that it was the first land granted to the Knights Templar in Portugal. The church, dating back to 11 or 26, hold symbolic clues rather than written records. They examined the church walls for mason's marks and other symbols, and found one similar to the one carved on the legendary 90-foot stone on Oak Island. The discovery raises questions about the origin and meaning of that unique symbol. The team then heads to Tomar, Portugal, known as the Templar City, to explore the Templar connection further. The city's Church of St. John the Baptist is another significant Templar site. The team discussed with experts the history of the Knights Templar in Tomar, their rebranding as the Order of Christ, and the symbolic changes in their cross emblem. The conversation with Joao and the examination of symbols show the possibility that Nolan's Cross, a formation discovered on Oak Island, represents the symbol of the Portuguese Knights of Christ. The similarities between the elongated cross on the church and Nolan's Cross confirm this theory oval chain, and ox shoe. In recent seasons, Gary Drayton and treasure hunter Michael John made a groundbreaking discovery while exploring Lot 8. The team had been focusing on Lot 8 due to significant metal signals detected by their ground-penetrating radar at a depth of 20 feet. Gary Drayton noticed a layer of rocks indicating human activities in the area. Further evidence came in the form of a mysterious stone-paved feature, a large boulder, and a semi-precious garnet gemstone. Scott Clark, a 32nd degree Freemason, believes these could be connected to the Knights Templar and the Ark of the Covenant. While waiting for permission to excavate the anomaly area, Rick, Marty, and Craig, the team leaders, sent Gary and Michael to find more clues supporting Scott Clark's theory. Their initial investigation with a metal detector hinted at historical artifacts and digging revealed an old oval chain link likely used to transport a large chest. As they continued exploring, they came across a well-preserved ox shoe, adding to the mystery. The good condition of the ox shoe suggested it was used to carry heavy cargo along those paths, 
These findings align with discoveries from over two years ago, when the team found ancient stone pathways, ox shoes, and evidence of large cargo operations on the island. The team believes a significant operation occurred in Lot 8, supporting Scott Clark's theory of Knights Templar activities and the potential hiding of religious artifacts. These connections grow stronger as more discoveries unfold in Lot 5. Anomalies In addition to artifacts, the team has recovered a metal object similar to those found near Smith's Cove on the island's eastern end. Blacksmithing expert Carmen Legg deemed two iron tools, known as swages, discovered on the western side to be of significant importance. The team ponders the potential age of these artifacts and their connection to deeper anomalies detected underground. Following these discoveries, Marty Lagina, Jack Begley, and Gary Drayton embark on an excavation on Lot 8, a location with compelling anomalies. The team gains permission for a five-foot deep dig to explore the mysteries beneath the surface. Equipped with metal detectors and optimism, they aim to find evidence of human activity in hopes of obtaining a permit for more extensive excavation. The team encounters challenges during the Lot 8 dig, including rocks and signs of prior disturbance. Despite the obstacles, they unearthed a massive artificially placed boulder and a paved feature, indicating potential human intervention. The team speculates about the significance of these findings, pondering the existence of tunnels, vaults, or hidden treasures below. The investigation turns unexpectedly when Gary Drayton discovers a unique artifact, a piece resembling part of a horse's bridle. This raises questions about why a horse-related item would be found on Oak Island, considering historical records only mention the use of oxen for farming on the eastern end. The team contemplates the rarity of such a discovery and its potential link to other artifacts and anomalies. As the team investigates Lot 8 further, they find a peculiar chain-like object sparking curiosity about its purpose and origin. The team's excitement grows as they consider the uniqueness of these discoveries and the possibility of uncovering more hidden secrets on Oak Island. The findings, including the horse-related artifact and the chain, add complexity to the island's history and fuel the team's determination to delve deeper into the mysteries beneath the surface. These discoveries have added layers to Oak Island's mysterious past, fueling the team's determination to unveil the island's hidden secrets. Future excavations promise more revelations, promising a deeper understanding of the historical significance of each discovery. Attention all adventurers! Are you tired of phone cases that can't keep up with your lifestyle? Look no further than the Cosmos Tough Case. This case is designed to withstand the toughest conditions and is perfect for those who love exploring the unknown. Whether you are in the middle of a blizzard or deep in the jungle, the Cosmos Tough Case is ready to handle anything. It's waterproof, dustproof, and shock resistant so that you can drop it without fear. Plus, its unique style is sure to turn heads wherever you go. Don't let your phone hold you back on your next adventure. Order the Cosmos Tough Case today by clicking on the link in the description. Thank you for watching. Share your reviews and thoughts in the comments section. While you are still here, kindly click on the like and subscription button to get engaged with more intriguing videos like this. See you soon.